All right, welcome back to Module 7, Financing, Loans, Offers, Negotiations, Closings, basically just a lot of hodgepodge of stuff that uh, we may have touched on, but some other stuff just for you. Um, according to the report by the Urban Institute in 2018, there are more than 2,500 grants and loan programs nationwide that are designed and geared towards uh, first-time home buyers. Now, there's mixed feelings there. One is the upside would be 2,500 seems to be a lot. The downside is because there are so many, once again, we're pulling in this whole confusion, analysis, paralysis, where do I start, all of this. There are typically two kinds of assistance that they can get. They can get down payment assistance, down payment assistance. Um, so there are programs out there that can bring their cost of their down payment down. There are second mortgages. They can get deferred payment loans. They can get loans forgiven. Uh, and these are all generally backed by any local or state housing program. So check with the state that you're in and uh, see what programs are available. They can also get closing cost assistance. Uh, typically closing costs are two to 6% plus loan fees. You know, we're not gonna argue about that. Uh, but there are many of grants out there that are government sponsored and private entities that can provide these grants that are designed to help with the closing cost. In some cases, you might even ask the seller to uh, give concessions. Now, I know depending on the market that you're in, the market we're in right now, that's probably not going to fly, but that's not necessarily 100% true, all right? Um, First-time home buyer programs and and grants can help uh, a lot of these first-time home buyers achieve their goal of home ownership. Uh, there are 20, there are no, how many are there? 10 or 11 that we're going to talk about here that are specifically designed for first-time home buyers for people less than 20% down. Now remember, the average down payment was only 5% according to the NAR statistics. So let's talk a little bit about some. Um, I've labeled 10 of them for the first time home buyer program. Um, I am sure most of you have heard of these, if not all of them. Um, FHA, the FHA loan. The strength is credit score as low as 500. Yeah, that's not a typo. They can go down to 500. Um, or and as little as three and a half percent down. Now, notice there's a semicolon between there because I don't think those two things go together. If you've got a 500 credit, I think it's 10 percent down that's required. Uh, if you want three and a half percent down, you got to have that 680 credit. But that's still one of the advantages: is low down payments and people with low credit. All right. Now, what's the downside to an FHA loan? Obviously, there's uh, mortgage insurance, uh, and then the house actually has to pass FHA requirements, all right? Uh, USDA loans, same thing. 100% financing with like a 640 credit score. The downside is it is limited to specific houses. For example, they have to be in urban designated areas like Marion County doesn't qualify. If you're in Indiana, Marion County doesn't qualify. Dade County, Miami doesn't qualify. I believe if you go to the USDA.org and jack around with the site long enough, you can actually get uh, to a page where you can type in the address of the house with the city and the state and the zip code. It'll spit out immediately if that house qualifies. VA loans, once again, 100% financing. So there's a great advantage and no mortgage insurance. The downside is obviously there's a funding fee with that. Um, it's two, like 2.75% for the first time. Um, and of course, the other thing, obviously being a VA loan, 
must be an honorably discharged eligible veteran to qualify. There are things called the good neighbor next door loan. It is for uh, public service professor, uh, professionals, school teachers, firefighters, EMTs, um, nurses. They can get some HUD homes at a 50% discount in price. Now, so that's the strength. It's a 50% off in the price of the house. The downside is it's one of their houses. So it's got to be a HUD home. And it actually, you have to be in one of those services to actually qualify. So if you got a guy that works at a factory, he's never going to qualify for the good neighbor next door, right? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has some special deals, 3% down. They've got a uh, credit score qualification, 620, and there's PMI. So that's the downside to Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Um, the Home Path and Home Ready program, um, it is helps with potentially affordable homes. The downside to it is there is a limited number of properties that qualify because they actually do need some repairs and there's actually a home buyer's class that the buyer has to take. Yeah, the buyer actually has to go to a class. I know nothing about the class. I don't know if it's one hours or 10 hours. Um, I am gonna put a link actually in this site so that you can check it out. There are energy efficient mortgages for people that are into that whole green thing, it helps them make improvements with, with uh, upfront on the acquisition. The problem is, is it actually adds to their mortgage so they get more, higher mortgage payments. That's one of the downsides to the whole thing. Um, there's the 203K loan. We call that the rehab loan. Once again, same as FHA. There actually is an upfront mortgage premium. Um, it does allow for the same still low down payment, but it allows you to finance some expenses for improvements. Now there is a cap on those improvements of 35 grand. Now that seems to be a lot of repair, but I don't know. It depends what market you're in. If you're in, you know, Virginia or uh, Florida or Indiana or Nevada. So there is a cap on that which does increase your mortgage amount, obviously, so your mortgage payment goes up. A lot of states have first-time home buyer programs. Uh, the strength in those is uh, they do cover down payment and closing cost assistance. They actually do have lower interest rate mortgages. The problem is they have got income limits, and I don't mean necessarily you gotta be above, you actually have to be below because it's designed for low to moderate income, and they too require educational courses. Um, obviously it's nothing earth shattering. I mean, I am sure anybody that wants to buy a house probably should take this home buyer's course anyway. Then there's one called the Native American Direct Loan, 100% uh, financing, uh, no mortgage insurance, and actually limited closing costs. Obviously the downside is there's some eligibility requirements that have to be met. And there is a funding fee as well, just like the VA, all right? So there is a website that I have put on the screen for you guys. Um, if you're at home, I put it on the, well, it's on the screen still, <laughs> just a smaller screen. That link will take you to a state-by-state -state, uh, website so that if you're in Florida or Nevada or Virginia or Indiana, wherever you're at, you can check out NerdWallet's article and they have got a list by state. Click on your state, it'll flip over and tell you uh, a bunch of different loans that are within that state, all right? Now, when it comes to writing the offer for first-time home buyers, there's not a whole bunch of difference on the actual offer itself. And we're certainly not going to go through the strategies of writing offers because that would be a whole two hour class in and of itself. But just, there are two things that I would suggest before you submit the offer, you might want to take a revisit on their budget. 
did they factor in everything that's going to be involved with the new home ownership, like closing costs? Remember, it costs money to buy a house. One that a lot of people tend to forget or don't think about is the commuting cost. Hey, we live downtown in an apartment. Now we're buying a house in the same price range and our rent's going to be the same amount as our mortgage payment. But now I live 25 miles out of town. There's going to be an added cost to go to work. Um, who knows now with this work at home, maybe there's not an added cost. Um, are there any immediate repairs that didn't get taken care of in the negotiation? Um, are there going to be ones that you don't ask for? Another question you might want to discuss with them is earnest money. How much do they actually have? Specifically, if they are using the Native American uh, loan or the VA loan where there's no down payment, the reason they're maybe using that loan is because they don't have a lot of money. They may not have any earnest money. All right. Uh, pop quiz, hotshot. Is earnest money required in the state of Indiana? Some states, actually, I don't think any of the states are. The answer is no. Earnest money is not required at all, unless you make it part of the deal. You can write an offer with no earnest money. All right. Will the seller let you get away with that? That's a whole nother question. One other thing they might want to think about that you got to keep in mind and talk to them. The closing date that you are going to put in the offer, how does that line up with their lease they're in or their current living arrangement? You know, nothing worse than for them to go, oh yeah, well, we still got eight months left on our lease and we found a house really quick. Now what do I do? Because I can't get out of my lease for eight months. Does your lease have a buyout clause? Well, if it does, that's cool, two thumbs up, but that's a cost those buyers may have to bear, all right? So you might want to remember to talk to them about that. Now, after you submit the offer, there's some things you need to think about. All of these activities are going to now start taking place. You've got an inspection that's got to be scheduled. You've got appraisers that's got to be scheduled. You've got lender docs that have to be turned over. And you need to explain to them the urgency in all of this happening. Not just why is it happening, but there's also a key about urgency. When your lender says, I need last year's taxes, they need it like today, not like in 10 days when I get around to it, because every day they delay potentially could delay the closing that many days as well. Now, here's another thing that most of us, and I see you guys smiling because you're looking at the screen behind me already. Um, this is something that I've been in this business 20 years. I used to forget. I I'd forget to tell people because it seems so obvious to me, but this is something you need to explain to first time home buyers. Don't change your credit. Hey, we got a house accepted. We're closing next week. Let's go out and buy a bunch of new furniture on our credit card so that we can uh, put stuff in the house. No, tell them that. Don't use your credit. Don't get new credit. Don't pay off credit. Don't miss a credit payment. Don't miss any payment. You know, none of that because they are, they being the lender is going to pull their credit one last time right before the closing to make sure they're still eligible. You know, worst case scenario, they get approved for a loan. They get all excited. They go out and they buy rent. They go to rent a center and they rent a whole house full of new TVs and couches and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden their DTI is too high and they don't qualify anymore. Don't laugh, I've seen it, all right? Seen it firsthand. The other thing I wanna tell you is constant contact. And no, I don't mean the email company. I mean, you need constant contact with them because remember, they're excited, they're anxious, they don't understand the process yet, they've never gone through this. So to you and I, two days may go by like a snap of the finger to them, two days without hearing from somebody 
may seem like chicken little and the end of the world is coming. Uh, one of the things I tell my agents, we used to have what was called phone call Friday. Dude, just call them on Friday, every Friday. Go, hey, nothing to tell you. Because the phone call that says nothing to tell you is way better than no phone call, even though you've got nothing to tell them. Because they've at least heard your voice. They know you're thinking of them. They know you're moving forward. And they puts them more at ease. Once again, babysitter syndrome. All right. Well, that's basically the entire course. We got one more module we're going to finish up with here in just a second. So hang around here.